scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Every time we're gathered before him, it's important that we approach him with an attitude that believes that he is able to change us. Please listen. It's one thing to come before God and come for a meeting like this just to satisfy a religious ritual, a loyalty to a vision and a ministry. But it's another thing for our hearts to be open, especially for those of us who are just coming for the first time. I don't want us to be careless about our approach. Let your heart be open because the truths that you are about to hear will change you. Galatians chapter 2 verse 2, the apostle was speaking. He said, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. Not just by desire. It takes more than desire. It takes more than sincerity to reign in life. Our victory in life is upon the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we understand. So every time we are gathered before him, I like you to know that that is the time to not just hear the word like scripture being quoted but an understanding of the principles of the kingdom hallelujah the word of god represents his wisdom his idea about everything in life when explained when understood when received and mixed with faith there is no power in existence that can stop a performance hallelujah so it's important for our hearts to be open and the second thing that we have to do to is that as you listen to the word of god open up your spirit most especially along the area where you are trusting god to see the word manifest some of us are fine with other areas. The Bible says Naaman was a great man. He was the captain of the Syrian army. But, so when it came to warfare, when it came to his rulership, he was okay. But his health, there was an attack upon his health. So as you listen to the word of God, pay attention to the area that concerns you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome again everyone especially those who have come from far all our lovely people from um, university of abuja wave your hands god bless you wow wow let's honor them let's bless them thank you your life will never be the same in the name of jesus you will carry strange dimensions of grace and go back with it hallelujah One of the, the principal advocacies of this ministry is the understanding that until a man encounters God, please listen, until you have a personal encounter with the God of the Bible, your Christian experience is barren, useless, deceitful, and destructive. Now listen. I chose my words very intelligently. Barring, 
useless deceitful and then ultimately destructive because the danger of approaching spiritual things without a true encounter is that we will have a form of godliness hallelujah but then we will deny its power we will have a lot of concepts that we believe came from the bible with no corresponding grace to demonstrate their validity so with time our christian experience will become a mockery on ourselves because we will make bold claims about a god we do not know talk audaciously about a kingdom we do not understand and attempt to to live by principles we do not fully grasp none of these things will produce results in our lives then at the end we'll find out that our faith is the same with those who never sought god from the beginning so it is important that as we seek to rise to levels of strength and grace in the spirit our approach must be according to patterns hallelujah one of the things again that we teach in this place um, are the mysteries of the kingdom i am absolutely convinced that the growth and the level of leadership and excellence of every believer is tied not just to his knowledge of god but his comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom you hear me say this all the time the mysteries of the kingdom hold the key to dominion in this kingdom there is no other way of exercising kingdom dominion hallelujah whether it is prosperity whether it is walking in the anointing of the holy spirit whether it is leadership influence whatever system of the kingdom you want to approach they function by laws everybody say laws and um, all that we do in this place is number one to keep progressing in our encounter the knowledge of the person Jesus and then to understand the principles of the kingdom and then to release an impartation grace upon us to be able to demonstrate that these things we believe are not just stories so when you come for koinonia you expect an encounter with the person christ that encounter has nothing to do with my teaching while i am teaching christ is revealing himself to people are we together now then the principles of the kingdom the keys that produce stars and champions in the kingdom and then an impartation a transference of grace the implication of that is that the transference is what is responsible for activating possibilities in your life that you have not seen that result in your life does not mean it's not available it says you will arise and shine when your light comes hallelujah so expect encounters expect revelation understanding accurate dispensing of the principles of god and the goal of the teaching of the principles of god is to do three things number one to challenge our paradigms our understanding to influence our convictions to the end that we lay aside every understanding that is not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom if the word of god cannot gain ascendance to a point where it challenges your understanding and corrects something you know i have so much passion for the understanding of the word of god because in my opinion it is god's justice and mercy to remedy for the inadequacies that came with our background so i may have had a background that was not very very favorable polygamous family perhaps or a family that has been ravaged by witchcraft and all of that and an option was never given to me to choose whether i want to be part of that system or another now when the word of god comes it leaves you with a choice to correct faulty foundations and set a new course for yourself your children 
the generation that will come after you or continue in that error and perish hallelujah the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god hebrews chapter 4 right began to talk about the rest they are the people of god but there is still a dimension of rest they are yet to enter and he says let us therefore labor to enter that rest hallelujah so let your let your attention be very intentional you must commit yourself i was very touched when i got information that these gentlemen and ladies were coming all the way from abuja they came all the way with their boss you know came to pay the price for an encounter that's called commitment it's more than desire it's called commitment are we together and um first timothy chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 down to 16 he says meditate on these things what things the truths that have been taught you meditate on these things then he says give yourself wholly not half-heartedly wholly to them he says that your profiting will appear unto men that means your profiting will never appear unto men until there is a level of commitment are we together now yes commitment has always been one of the keys to mastery when you commit yourself you commit your potentials your time your resources and then your results will be commensurate to the commitment hallelujah faith is the name given to your partnership with god as far as the delivery of your expectations are concerned there is a partnership there is a role that you have to play he said good master what must i do to be saved it is within your power to save me but what is my role what must i do to be saved hallelujah scripture says if ye be willing and obedient then it says you will eat the good of the land the good will not come to you just because you have desire there must be willingness there must be obedience there is a path you either follow that path or you remain where you are it says ask for the ancient path you don't have to create one there is ask for the ancient paths hallelujah i teach you these truths because i want your life to produce results you see we do not serve god just because of results however at a point in your christian experience these results validate your pursuit they motivate you and they serve as consolations to your christian experience when jesus saw the fig tree without fruit he cursed it he said no man eats from you from hence and it withered so when a believer's life becomes an episode of failure after failure defeat after defeat pain after pain tragedy after tragedy there is need to not just probe your relationship with the lord jesus christ but probe your understanding of the systems of the kingdom because the operation of god is systemic there are systems everybody say systems say one more time systems there is the governmental system of the kingdom it is the dimension of the operation of the kingdom that is responsible for allotting rankings and responsibility is God's system of authority is the system of God that is responsible for promotion responsible for the distribution of offices is his governmental system there is the economic system of the kingdom that is responsible for the allotment of the welfare of the citizens so you can excel in an understanding of a dimension and be unfruitful in another dimension are we together you can be an excellent preacher yet be a very terrible father a terrible husband are we together you can tap into the dimension of the spirit that is responsible for success and achievement and yet fail as far as your personal spiritual growth is with god 
you can be anointed by tapping into the principles that open the gates of the anointing but then crash eventually because you have not been open to the dimension that brings in you the character to sustain that anointing so it's not only important to open yourself to one dimension of the kingdom you must study the systems of the kingdom there's no magic about excelling in this kingdom it's an intentional formula an encounter first please listen in this order never begin to study the systems of the kingdom without an encounter with the person christ that's what leads to mysticism and scientology are we together an attempt to explore the principles of the kingdom outside of an encounter with the person christ in this kingdom everything revolves around jesus christ listen if at any point you are found attempting to explore anything about the kingdom outside of the supervision of jesus christ you are already in error and that's what we call witchcraft it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you so up front before we explore the mysteries of the kingdom i need to balance this because there is such appetite especially for we the younger people there is such appetite for exploring not just the mysteries of the kingdom but anything mystical we we have grown progressively in this craze for anything that is not widespread information so the understanding that all power belongs to god has erroneously authorized many people to now explore anything so we read zodiac signs we read uh, the books of moses we read all kinds of the um, and um, um, astrology and all kinds of ancient babylonian scientology we mix everything together because we believe in our folly that we can get the correct part of the information and then by our strength balance it are we seeing now so we are attempting to explore realities in the kingdom outside of the direction and the supervision of christ this is the difference between what i'm teaching you and a lot of junks that a lot of people try to teach so there is obsession when they come out in the morning and they see that the cloud is red they want to give a a an astrological and then spiritual explanation so that obsession for mysticism every time the word of the, of god is dispensed with simplicity those kinds of people reject it the moment the word is too simple they say no i need something deep meaning i need something surrounded with a lot of mysticism and oftentimes we men of god use mysticism to cover for our foundational inferiority and complex we come from backgrounds where we have hardly been believed and so we find succor on the strength of possessing informations that are not public so when we dispense these informations in our minds we feel we are respected on the strength of our mysticism so we pride ourselves the more mystical we look the happier we are with ourselves that's not the way the kingdom works are we together when jesus came when he taught the word children understood him adults understood him intellectuals understood him if this was designed to reach the whole world then there must be a system of simplicity that surrounds its operation let me tell you the truth over 70 percent of the informations that are being promoted in church are unnecessary for the growth and the excellence of a believer's life trust me the more you know christ the more you see how useless certain informations are that we punish ourselves to believe that until we know these things he said that i may know him so it starts with knowing him then the power of his resurrection the realities that accompany that person the beginning the foundation of a christian journey is not access to mysteries it will lead you into occultism 
the foundation of a christian's journey is an encounter with the person christ not the kingdom the person of jesus christ not the holy spirit the person of jesus christ not an angel not the 24 elders not the four living creatures none of these things have the ability to give you is like a compass so the, you know when, when you stand to measure your weight or whatever it is calibrated to zero and it must be calibrated to zero for you to have a correct measurement that's how it is jesus is the beginning he shows you the correct pathway to start your journey now the trouble is there are so many people who teach a lot of mysticisms in the body of christ without a personal revelation of the person christ that was the mistake of isaiah from chapter 1 to 5 he was teaching prophesying dispensing the realities of the kingdom but in chapter 6 verse 1 the bible says in the year that king uzziah died he said i isaiah saw the lord when he saw the lord at once he no longer was interested in ministry can you imagine a man who hitherto was happy to be a prophet he said woe is me i am undone in other words i need to reset this spiritual curriculum altogether. please hear me koinonia hear me and be wise do not ever make a mistake of thinking god will grant you grace and access to people on the strength of mysticism are we together that you can bring a lot of mysticism and explain how moses learned the babylonian intelligence and explain all of those things and come up with archaeological intelligence none of these things in themselves sustain the ability to produce effect you see we do these things and we mock ourselves in church the sick still remain sick the oppressed still remain oppressed in fact at the end of our teaching those who were once confident that they love god do not even know what they believe again no that's not the way it works there should be a level of certainty he said i know whom i have believed i'm not confused i didn't meet an angel i know whom i believe he said and i am persuaded hallelujah i watch preachers and and you know i love the body of christ but then i watch preachers sadly and i see how a number of people become gullible this craze and passion for mysticism any pdf material anything at all that can make you mystical is we pride ourselves around it are we together then we come up with all kinds of teachings the title of my teaching is the reason why michael is called michael now i'm not i'm not being cynical but it's funny how we waste people's time and demons laugh at our stupidity as they watch us do the things we do jesus said this when he was sending the disciples he said heal the sick cast out devils raise the dead cleanse the lepers he said preach the kingdom is that true he sent them with a specific knowledge you see there are all kinds of information on earth but not all of them are relevant for our spiritual growth and development there is a dimension of spiritual knowledge called forbidden knowledge it is not within the curriculum that is given to our dispensation in other words attempting to access it is a waste just like there are certain kinds of knowledge that our dispensation is not yet qualified to receive when this is done then we will have access to eat of that tree of life it wasn't to satisfy hunger it was to reveal a dimension of christ the great prophet of god william branham i honor him so much even in his death towards the end of his life fell into this error i'm trying to correct for you william branham stepped into a dimension of the prophetic that only few people have stepped in it's called the creative dimension of prophecy where he would sit in a forest and watch squirrels be created out of thin air and walk just like elisha the prophet but then towards the end he 
became philosophical in his approach towards God and he started coming up with a lot of teachings there are people today called the Brahamites those who subscribe to the ideology of William Branham a great man but towards the end of his life he brought a lot of erroneous teachings are we together now yes there's no point telling us some of those teachings but then it was him that began to propose how that Cain was the son of the serpent he gave a teaching that the serpent also slept with Eve so Adam came I mean Abel came from Adam and Cain came from the serpent you see that was his idea and there are all kinds of other teachings great men and women of God around the world but attempting to come up with a lot of teachings that by the time you come around those teachings they will make you diabolic you will no longer see sense in the laws of God it's as if there is a level of haphazardness and discretion in the dealings of God no it's not that way there is a formula that defines the dealings of God with man hallelujah tonight I want to teach you something that has blessed me I've taught these principles across in our external ministrations but I just realized that I've not done that teaching here in the house and the Holy Ghost began to put it in my heart that I should teach it and so I'm going to be teaching us tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Matthew 13 verse 11 please hallelujah in your name we will rise I don't know you reign on earth. in your name we will rise I don't know you reign on earth. sing it as a prophecy in your name I will rise I don't know One more time. It's in your name we will rise. I don't know. You reign on time. Matthew 13, verse 11. I like us to read one to read he answered and said unto them because it is given sorry it's not projected we really apologize let's take it again one to read 13 verse 11 because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but unto them it is not given change the word mystery to secrets ready read it again one to read please look up these truths are called secrets not because God does not want them known are we together the idea of the principles of the kingdom being called secrets has nothing to do with God's um God's one thing to hide them from people. No. They are called secrets only because the operation of those principles will require the presence of the Holy Spirit to help you understand. He said it is given to you in the kingdom. You who have encountered Christ. It has been given unto you. It's part of the privileges of submitting to the Lordship of Christ. To know 
have access to the mysteries of the kingdom it says but to them who are the them those who are without those who have willfully ignored the person of jesus christ he said to them that access has not been given but to you it has been given say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus it has been given unto me to know to understand to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom it has been given to me to understand the systems of the kingdom and i will understand i will master these laws and i will reign in life listen ladies and gentlemen i give you a guarantee please hear me i give you a guarantee if you pay attention to these truths your life will look like a god upon the earth believe me the laws of the kingdom are not emotional they don't have any tribal affiliations or sentiments to them you're not going to say because i'm a northerner or because i'm from the south or east no god is no respecter of persons any and everyone at all who will open up himself or herself and pay attention to these truths will rise like an edifice out of any kind of obscurity in the name of jesus christ there are six laws that have changed my life six principles that i have taught and shared there are so many but in recent times i found myself advocating these things and helping the body of christ understand these principles i'm going to run through them very quickly and then we'll pray hallelujah three things will happen to you as i teach number one is that you will have all kinds of encounters number two the lord will grant you understanding i sincerely pray for you that you will have understanding the bible says and open he their understanding that they may understand the scripture meaning until god opens your understanding you will keep hearing stories hallelujah and then number three the supply of grace will come upon your life that ability of the holy spirit that enhances performance may that be your portion in the name of jesus for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high For your glory be lifted Hallelujah. Number one. Is the law that is responsible for unusual grace. Please listen. In the life of a man. What principle makes men so powerful? I have met men in my life and I've heard of others. I have followed others who are extremely powerful. There is a strong manifestation of the hand of God and the grace of God upon their lives. And I have seen others who love God sincerely, but I've not seen as much grace. Is it just an election of grace? Or is there a pathway a man can follow? To the end that you will access heavy dimensions of the hand of God. There is. There is. And I want to show you. Praise the Lord. It's called the law of complete surrender. Please write it down. Complete surrender. This is the first mystery in the kingdom I want to teach you. The secret of unusual grace. Heavy anointings upon men. Men who have access to territories. There is a mystery that governs that operation. It's called complete surrender. The source of my strength, now you. The strength of my life, now you. My hope and my joy, now you. My confidence, now you. Your 
are the source of my strength Now you The strength of my life Now you My hope and my joy Now you In my confidence Now you So I Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Except God be with him. What you see in this ministry is the finger, the very finger of God. And we give him all the praise and to him be all the glory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16. Let's continue. Matthew 16 verse 25 Matthew 16 verse 25 I'm establishing the law of complete surrender Matthew 16 verse 25 for whosoever now listen I want to establish a law whosoever will save his life shall what lose it but whosoever will lose his life listen for my sake not for foolishness not as a result of drinking beer and a car knocks you down whosoever to show how much he's passionate about me will lose his life he says he will gain it please listen in this kingdom we rise up by losing things you do not gain things and rise the extent to which you rise in power the extent to which you rise in grace is called the sacrifice of death death to yourself death to your ambitions death to your appetites and desires death to a life of sovereignty outside of the Christ the more you die to yourself the more your flesh is crucified at the cross the more you are able to tap into untold dimensions of spiritual power listen every man defines the limit of his spiritual possibility as far as accessing the power of God is concerned I may love God you may love God. Listen, the difference between both of us is not just the election of grace alone, but our individual willingness to lay down what defines relevance outside Christ. For the sake, it says, this one thing I do, forgetting everything that is behind. It didn't say forgetting bad things. Everything. Jesus became Lord and Christ by his ability to lay down his glory, his reputation, Philippians 2 from verse 5 to 10. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? Who, although he was equal with God, he did not consider it robbery, for equal in power, but he laid aside that glory, that grace, and became a man that would have been enough humiliation and then the bible says he now died the death of a sinner the death being a cause then it says wherefore on the strength of losing his life his personal relevance when jesus came to the earth it was enough for him to say look i am everything but even being humiliated as a man he still submitted to the governing authority of his father he said i can of my own do nothing the word of god speaking the word that created the heavens and the earth he said i can of my own do nothing he said as i see my father do 
sacrifice so many of us may never get to this realm of power although we may fast although we may pray it's not just by fasting and prayer there is a point you must come to where you will say like John in John 3 31 that I may decrease listen that he may increase there are some of you looking at me here if you had one tenth of the results that God has blessed this ministry with God will never see your face again you see as I'm speaking to you make sure you are hearing the Lord talk to you absolute surrender where you have no desire whatsoever to build titles for yourself God is my witness I've said this for years and I'm still saying it I have no desire whatsoever to build an empire Joshua Selman Apostle Joshua Selman the great man of God the anointed man of God no I have only one desire to see his kingdom come and that my life becomes a mirror not showing myself but revealing an ability greater than me over 70 percent of those who have been blessed by this ministry have never seen me face to face some of you this is the first time you are seeing me face to face you know why because it has always been my desire for christ and him alone to be exalted as a person i'm useless and unnecessary to your spiritual growth i am only necessary on the strength of number one the election of grace and the privilege of representing the person christ that's where i draw my relevance from i'm aware of that so at no point in my christian experience and my journey in ministry will i ever declare independence wanting people to know me outside of the christ but for many of us hidden in our fastings hidden in our prayers hidden in our night vigils hidden in our attending seminars and reading books is such an appetite for for being honored and recognized to an extent that it doesn't matter whether Christ is glorified or not. We have such desire to be celebrities in the kingdom. You are not a celebrity by writing songs and producing albums and doing the way they do in the world. You are a celebrity to the degree to which you die and no man sees you. They only see the Christ. It's a realm called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Please listen. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He says, and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Please hear me. Quit this desire for vain glory, self-glorification. I'm not saying do not desire honor it is part of the system of the kingdom to honor those who represent christ well he said let them that rule well be given double honor are we together but if that is the foundation of your pursuit and then you now write songs because you want to be a celebrity and show frank edwards and the rest that they are not the only ones you know and sometimes we men of god teach these things sincerely in church but we do not realize we are destroying people in an attempt to motivate people and spur them towards excellence we try to give them an idea that there is an inner giant within them that giant is outside christ wake that sleeping giant and what many people mean is look you can rise outside of partnership with christ only know these laws the foundation of the relevance of the christian is tied to christ don't forget this at no point in your life will your independence from god favor you at no point in john 21 jesus was speaking to peter and he gave him what i define to be the hallmark of spiritual maturity he said when you are young come 
when you are young in the kingdom you are allowed to go and do everything you want to do but the older and the more mature you become it says someone will hold your hands and will take you even to places you do not want dependence is the hallmark of maturity in the spirit independence and rebellion are communications of self-centeredness and carnality the more matured you become in the kingdom the more your hands will have to be held submission defines maturity in the kingdom thank you hallelujah i have learned this law and it has blessed me never you see a man who has donated himself to god and think that man is at a disadvantage you are joking except if the man did it religiously or he did it carnally or in the course of his journey he was weary and did not finish i have not found one man from scripture who left all to commit himself to the purposes of christ listen i have not found one man who took his life as a trophy and say lord find glory in this life and was not relevant when god called abraham a traditional worshiper in a land called or of the chaldeans in genesis chapter 12 he called abraham and he said i will make you a great nation and all of that and then he says come out of your father's house in other words come into a life come into a life of dependence and at the end he turned a man to a nation the same thing he did for gideon the same thing he did for moses the same thing he will do to any man you've heard me say it and i will repeat it tonight the lord told me years ago he said if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you because in god's mind it doesn't make any difference whether the virtues are with him or with me the allegiance does not change so god can commit to you what is in his hands because he knows that it is still his own in your hands this attitude of ownership you will never hear me say my ministry no my ministry this are till today you've heard me say it again and again i am and, and a lot of people have felt bad i still feel my body still shakes to look at someone and call my son in the gospel a lot of people have said you've never called me son you've never called me daughter because to call someone son or daughter it it, it even looks like I'm, I'm i'm embarrassing myself because compared to where god wants me to be i'm only a step out of the cave yet some of you this is the hallmark of your ministry there is such appetite to surround people with everybody including your father and mother and everybody they are your sons and daughters and we pride ourselves in it this is my church of 20 members. They are all my children. No. I'm showing you a principle that will change your life in everything. My business. So you pay the bills and it kills you. My business. He said, let it not be. Deuteronomy chapter 18. That when thou art built these houses from verse 14 down to 18. Right? And you have done this and that. That you say my power and the strength of my hands has given me this he said but thou shall remember the lord your god why because you can forget let me tell you success can erode the place of god in the life of a man it's god speaking to us oh god i want power i want the miraculous grace you know i see people i receive all kinds of text messages from people I remember i think two weeks ago one gentleman came uh, was it two weeks or so he came from i don't know which city he sent me a text he said apostle i'm coming to throw everything you carry that he wants a, a quad i think it's um, four is what quadruple right portion and i laughed as i said, look at look at this boy just kidding himself because you think you can inherit sacrifice you can't inherit death it's, it's a path he said verily verily i say unto you except a wheat falls to the ground that's not a gift that's a reward except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone 
I can release grace upon you but I cannot give you my secret place I cannot give you the priority I can only pray that grace be supplied and help you understand my convictions but it will be up to you to say Lord this is my job my wife my children my ministry my career I love all of them but I push all of them behind to make you first not just that find a place and and wage yourself in the midst of these things so you have your career usually money is the first money then wife then children then husband then god then politics then something he's just somewhere in the list the jealousy of god will fight anything above him in your life even if he's the one who gave you he will fight it it is his idea that everything in your life only finds relevance to the degree to which it is behind him so your gifts and talents are only relevant to the degree to which he is above them your prosperity is only relevant to the degree to which he is above them is god speaking to us open your mouth and pray in one minute and say lord i make you my priority please pray my priority not an instrument of relevance lord you are my priority Are you praying koinonia? My priority. Not money. Not fame. Not marriage. Not children. Not education. They are all important. Don't get me wrong. But they are useless the moment Christ is not above them. Believe me sooner or later you will learn the vanity of life outside of christ he is he does not add taste to life he gives it meaning jesus christ is not the salt of the earth jesus christ is life he does not add taste to your life no jesus christ does not add he introduces life to you he said this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life then he says and this life is in his son he who has the son has eternal life hallelujah listen listen never give god your remaining time you spend your time looking for money looking for wife husband children then eventually you feel guilty because usually you will not get any much result so you now run to christ and say okay god i know that you are not happy with me let me give you one day no it's not about giving god one day of a retreat god does not want one day he doesn't even want once a week he wants everything if he's not lord of all then everything that stands his way is your god praise the lord is God speaking to us? The law of absolute surrender. Jeremiah 29, please. 13 and 14. What are the benefits of God being a priority in the life of a man? Jeremiah 29, when you read from verse 13, it says, And ye shall seek me, listen, and find me when you seek me with all your heart sincerely speaking please hear me look up look up brothers and sisters hear me this half-hearted commitment towards god that we do one leg in and one leg out when it's favorable i love him when it's not favorable i don't love him you will never find the god i serve that way you must give him everything completely it can't be god and something else no the, the might and the jealousy of God puts him in a class all by himself. Are we together? He says you will find me only when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart. With all your heart. The problem is we are not seeking God with all our hearts. We are seeking what he can give. A number of us are gathered here. If I begin to prophesy now, 
and I say, oh, stand up. Your name is this, this and that. Many of us will be happy and say, thank God I came for today's service. You see, because that's really what you want. Man of God, what is my problem? What do I do about it? So we have created all kinds of systems in the body of Christ to cover our half-hearted following God. Are we together? We follow God half-heartedly. When demons start oppressing us, we look for a man quickly and just drop money. And because the man needs the money, he will not rebuke you. He will now collect it and say, go, it is done. It's not done. Let me tell you, it is not done. You will go back and those spirits will oppress you. Because this, what you are giving is bribe. There is no amount of seed you give a man of God that will cover the place that only your total commitment to God. Are we together? Yes. And pastors, stop collecting money from people and watching their spiritual lives go down and tell them, go, it is done. I'm telling you now, if anybody has told you that it is not done, there is a lot more to do. Sow your seed. Bless a man of God. But don't come to bribe a man to say, oh, man of God, pray for me. Me too. I, I'm so busy. You know, we are not like you. We really don't have that time to pray. If you don't have the time to pray, you don't have the time to live. If you don't have the time to study the word and know God, then please pray that your life will be given to someone who is serious with God so that at least maybe you can go to heaven or so. But when you are in this earth, you live by the systems of the kingdom. hallelujah nothing irritates me like seeing young people who are not passionate about God you see a guy stand and then you hear him talk and there is nothing kingdom in his conversation no love for God man of God how are you may God bless you in this missionary journey he doesn't even know he, he's trying to use Christian languages to look spiritual he says as you are helping us in this vineyard in this world where did you keep what nothing in the kingdom has altered your communication but they know every song they know every show they know everything that's the person saying he doesn't have time they know every football team right they know the winners of uefa champions league they are hoping that cashless uh, mastercard cashless will take them to the finals of uefa champions league they are hoping all these things will happen and they have no knowledge of God. Tell me one scripture where God said he will prosper you. You don't know. But you are there advocating for a man who will never tell you thank you. You see, we have to straighten our thinking. Please hear me. God is not a herbalist. A herbalist is not concerned about relationship. He's only concerned about practices. You don't even need to know the name of the herbalist. He just says, turn around drop your chicken, drop your goat, drop the money, go. It is done. You don't know his name. But when you come to God and say, God, I stretch my hands, he pushes your hand away and says, give me your heart. Let's start with your heart before we talk about your hand. Hallelujah. Number two. The second key secret of the kingdom I'll be sharing with you tonight we'll have to hurry up it's found in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 please let's hurry up Proverbs 23 verse 7 I'll read it for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart there can also be translated mind so is he for as he thinketh in his heart please look up so is he there is a law in the kingdom that realities are first formed within and from the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical. Please listen. That your life is only a looking mirror. And when you want to alter the course of your life, you don't alter it by changing things physically. You alter it by changing something within. Are we together? Imagine that this projector is a big mirror. And you saw yourself and maybe there was dust on your face. And then you are trying to chuck your hand in the mirror to clean the dust. Is that wisdom? That's the same thing that you are doing when you try to correct something in your life physically. Without correcting it from your mind. Because everyone, 
every one of you under the sound of my voice is a slave to your conditioning your paradigm your ideology are we together now i'm doing what i'm doing right now because there are certain sets of convictions that make me believe that this is the way to live a relevant life are we together when a gentleman sacks his jeans down and holds he go in his hand it's not just that there is a spirit oppressing him there is a mindset are we together there is an understanding within him that defines success to him and lets him know that if you want to succeed these are the things you do so he's a slave you see the body is an obedient instrument the body will obey your convictions 100 percent your body will move you only in the direction of your convictions sadly not your intentions so you may be hearing what i'm saying now you want to change but there is a conviction in you that will not allow you change listen this is why people remain poor this is why people remain sick this is why people remain failures they hear the word and they're ah i'm happy i've had this word but that was just their intention their true conviction is still what came from their village what took 20 years to become a stronghold in your mind is god speaking to us so when you come to the kingdom as the word of god is being taught you know what i'm doing to you there is a replacement going on in your mind are we together new ideas that are now consistent with the way of god are superimposing the ideas that came from culture the ideas that came from the our being victimized by reason of our post-colonial the side effect of being under the colonial rule that mindset of servitude as the word of god is coming is bringing new ideas and all of a sudden your concepts are changing you who would have been rebellious about the things of god now can sit down in church just like they gave the testimony our abuja people right how that someone who was not in the faith is now sitting down and burning for god three years ago that person had a conviction an ideology that informed him otherwise or her otherwise and now they found something you listen when you get born again the next assignment of the holy spirit is to take the principles of the word of god in partnership with your obedience and that there be a progressive replacement of wrong paradigms wrong ideologies are we together if you are smoking there is an understanding making you do it the issue is not to say stop smoking you cannot stop until the paradigm is changed and the spirit that keeps that paradigm effective leaves you when a man beats his wife something told him that's the way to keep your wife obedient and usually he would have interacted with people from his village and they said the way we, we have done this before you were born don't let ladies talk nonsense when they do anything beat the living daylight out of them do it once twice maybe three times or four and i'm telling you you have everything settled so you you are born again but you carry your village with you god wants to open you up to a beautiful life maritally but your village is interrupting it please i like you to make a commitment that you will have no loyalty to any mindset that is not of the christ no matter how long you've held on to it when you come before the lord you must lay it down in the name of jesus christ do you know why we resent ourselves and we hate our cultures i'll tell you why we hate people from different cultures because of what we think comes with the culture are we together a prevalent mindset so if i say a man from plateau state or kaduna state or kogi state or Ibom, or lagos or an Igbo man we associate these people with certain things ranging from irresponsibility to anger to loss for money to pride and so on and so forth to promiscuity but those things are ideologies they are conditionings listen 
the kingdom is another culture greater than your culture you can choose to remain an evil man or become a citizen of the kingdom you can choose to remain a northern man together with the strings of irresponsibility associated with our territory or you can come into the kingdom and let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus are we together conditioning so you love god but that mindset of being a champion is still eating you up so the moment you are in church and a man of god is preaching you try to outshine them that one is not god you are anointed but you are still a victim of a conditioning that you are only a celebrity when you are the only one doing what you are doing so you push every other person and make sure nobody has an, an opportunity to grow listen please hold on do you know that many of us pastors some of the things we introduce to members that we brag about and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that told us it's not the Holy Spirit. There is where the Holy Spirit stopped and our villages continued. But we mix everything and say it was the Holy Spirit. Are we together? I can be angry and call you stupid. And instead of accepting that, look, this, this one is a spirit. This is not the Holy Ghost. But I'll say, look, it's, it's just the zeal of the Lord. What do you expect? I have an apostolic anointing. Instead of being humble to admit, are we together now? Yes. Or the moment God reveals to me that you have one million in your account, I'm supposed to pass. He didn't say I should talk to you. But something in my territory that, that stimulates an appetite for material gain, this one has nothing to do with God again. I took advantage of prophetic access and saw one million and I'm drawn by my lust. Now you won't know because the atmosphere is heavy. People are falling under the anointing. So you assume it's God that is doing it. And I walk up to you and say, young man, stand up. You have one million. Hi! Hey! You say, yes. Exactly one million. Yes. He came last week. Yes, go and send it to my account. quickly. Now listen, I will, I will be so bold about it. You will never believe it came from me. I say, look, don't think I'm looking for your money. Just go and do this thing for your own good. And the guy will run and transfer it. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus. Now, does that mean, it doesn't mean I don't love the Lord. But there is a mindset that is mixing with ministry. Are we together? And if it wants, it must change. That's why there are people who don't mind getting anything. You love God. But then eventually, when there are bills that need to be paid, you will create some kind of prophetic platform and say, where are so, 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 and so people who must do A and B and C? And we make it look like it was God. No. Those ministries are suffering because of their lack of understanding the financial principles of the kingdom. And they will have to manipulate a system to cover up for their lapse of not understanding one system of the kingdom. Please, I'd like you to pray for one minute and say lord any conditioning in me that is responsible for my failure no matter how long i've held on to it let it go tonight please pray pray i'm sharing with you principles that will change your life please pray some of you that's why you may never enter a godly relationship any relationship you enter you love god you are tongue talking but there is an understanding you have about relationship about marriage that will never allow you be in a meaningful relationship. Some of you do not have friends. Because there is a thinking. There is a paradigm. It came with your village. The validity. The lifespan of any good friend in your life is two weeks. Something you do will drive them away. Take responsibility and pray. Stop saying it's just demons. Pray. And say Lord. I realize that your word says. To guard my heart with all diligence for out of it proceeds the issues of life regardless of my village and my territory regardless of where i come from there is a behavioral pattern that is tied to inferiority i have never realized that i'm behaving that way because there is a hidden sense of low esteem low self-esteem 
I have brought it into ministry. I have brought it into business. I have brought it into my home. And it's destroying my home. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Some of us are very cynical. We are very critical. You criticize everybody. You are a sadist. Your communication is always on the negative. Take responsibility and accept tonight that there is a mindset that is making you behave that way. And cry to the Lord for change. Don't say we are all like that in our family. Pray. There is a mindset that keeps you greedy. There is a mindset that makes you not to be a giver. There is a mindset that makes it look like tithing is a gimmick from men of God to collect your money and you remain poor. There is a mindset that makes you think your entire finances will come from salary and is killing you right now. Pray and say, Lord, any understanding, any paradigm I have held on to that is not consistent with your path, I, I become disloyal to it tonight. Hallelujah. Number three. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 7. Is God blessing us already? Please lend these keys and use them. And watch the mountains before you melt like wax before the fire. Hallelujah. Some years ago, I found out, listen, that every time I had challenges in my life, any kind of challenge, it was difficult for me to manage it. I didn't know what to do. As a leader, whenever I was faced between decisions, very major decisions, I didn't know how to manage some of the confusions that I experienced until I found what I'm about to teach you. If you learn what I'm about to teach you now, every time you are confused, you will find your way out. Ready? Proverbs chapter 3, please, from verse 5. Learn this. The third law. The key to receiving divine strategies from God. The key to receiving supernatural direction. A way out of a, a situation that should eat you and destroy your life. That when men say, this is it, there is no way out. Hear me, people of God, there is a way out. If you know what to do. It's found in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart right it says and lean not on your own understanding the next verse is where the key is in all your ways how many how many in all your ways it says acknowledge him what is the blessing behind that process and he shall direct <sighs> until that experience happens your path is crooked it says whenever you get to a point in your life where there is no way out humanly, there is a key. The key is to acknowledge him. I know it looks simple until you apply it. Are we together? Let me tell you how to acknowledge someone. I know that I've given this example, but please say Jimmy Stanza. Look at this. If this guy is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar bank are we together and he has come in our midst right now and i want to introduce him listen let me show you how to acknowledge a man i would start something like this ladies and gentlemen in our midst today we are privileged to have a jimmy in 1998 he got award for most innovative entrepreneur in 1999 he got award for the most customer driven company in 2005 he i begin to list all his achievements listen are we together now and then i'll tell you look it's a privilege to have him here please everyone we cannot continue until we recognize this rare gem with a standing ovation celebrate this person i have acknowledged him let me tell you what that does it puts pressure on him to repeat what you just acknowledged are we together now 
I cannot say he got this award, this award, and I say, please come and tell us good evening. And then he comes up and blows his credentials. Have you seen people you honored come on stage and you see how they are under pressure to preserve the honor you have given them? Your honoring and acknowledging them put pressure on them to represent. That's what you do to God. So when I get to a crossroad where there is no way out and men say like David in Psalm 3, he said many a day that rise up against me. Many a day that say where is his God? All of a sudden you forget about the problem and you say where is the God that parted the Red Sea with his nostrils? You are acknowledging him. Are we together? You start listing the things he did. That's what David did to Goliath. Where is the God that delivered me from the bear? Where is the God that delivered me from the lion? And he was putting pressure on the integrity of God. In other words, God, your name is about to go to the mud. And I am shouting it before men that you are the one that did it before. And all of a sudden, he shall make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. I show you a secret of endless victory. Because you see, as you rise... There are many people who will pray for your downfall. Not because they hate you. Your rise is equivalent to their failures. Because it kills every excuse. And so in their minds they will be hoping things will go bad. To justify that your success is nothing special. And at a point you will be at a crossroad. When you get to that point. Then you will open your mouth and begin to worship him. And call him all kinds of names. It's a secret I've learned. I will shut the door for one hour, two hours. I'm just worshiping him. And say, Lord, I thank you. I remember at so, so, so time when you came through for me. I will sing of your mercies. I remember the day when I did not have five naira. Is it today that I need one million that you cannot give me? I'm acknowledging him. I, I mount pressure on his integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what you should do. You mount pressure on God's integrity by acknowledging him before the forces of darkness. He healed you of HIV. Now cancer wants to destroy you. And people say, you know, I've always suspected this person was not healed. This koinonia, people just come and lie on stage here. HIV healed. Just like that. As if we are stupid, we went to school. Now cancer is eating you and you know humanly speaking that this cancer is progressing. Let me tell you how to deal with it. Forget about the cancer and go back and dance before God. Close your door. Call him all the names that will put pressure on him. I call you healer. Your name is healer. You are the healer to me. I call you healer. Your name is healer. Healer you are and healer you be. Listen, when you mount pressure on him, listen, you know, the way people behave sometimes, we behave as if God, you wrote an exam where you wrote nonsense and it came out A. Now you are in final year and your supervisor looks at you and says, if I'm in this department, you will not graduate. And you are about to depress yourself. No, go and lock the door and say in 100 level, where is the man that brought 3.5 for me? Regardless of this, oh God, listen, I'm not motivating you. I'm giving you a key to get out of confusion and make men swallow their words. I pray you believe what I'm teaching you because a day will come you will need it. Are we together? You are confused. Three years, no child. And everybody is talking. Saying if you, if you claim that you love God, where is the child? And then you sit down depressing yourself and say, but God, you say, Abba, am I not serving you? You will never get a miracle that way. There is a law. Lean not on your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. In one minute, can you open your mouth and acknowledge him? Mention the things he has done in your life before. Please, open your mouth. 
I survived cancer in 99. I survived financial crisis in 2007. Is it today I will lack food to eat? Where is the God of heaven? If he gave me a husband, will he not give me a child? If he gave me a job, will he not give me promotion? If he granted me grace to graduate, will he not give me a job? If he gave me life, will he not change my genotype from SS to AA? Pray, acknowledge him before Goliath. My rent has expired by Friday. If I don't pay, they will throw me out. Lord, where are you? Last year, at the dying minute, my rent came. I acknowledge you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The mighty God. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah! Come on, acknowledge Him before every trouble in your life. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen. When you grow in this law, there are some challenges you will not even pray about again. Because how do you start saying God is not faithful? When the challenges stand before you, there are too many testimonies to make you think about them. So what made you cry yesterday will no longer make you cry today. Listen, let me tell you. You know why men are bold in the kingdom? Some of us are bold because we have gone through hell and high water. I'm telling you. There's nothing you can think about that we've not gone through. So when it's like a man who has entered prison and came out, entered prison, came out, entered prison, then one day you tell him, I'll take you to prison. He'll just look at you and say, you are joking. Go and ask your warder. His name is Philip. Ask him whether he knows Joshua. And at the end, you have nothing. Listen. Satan thrives on your fear. He knows that our memories are so short. We forget too early. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not his benefits. Please lift your voice in one minute. To the shame of the devil and say lord you are faithful the marriage will still happen open your mouth and pray i will still be a landlord i will still hold my certificate that job will still come supplies will come from heaven men may laugh at me but there is a god that sits in heaven Are you praying? It's part of the meeting. Challenge your fear. Don't run away from it. Who are you down mountain? Where were you when God healed me? I really want you to acknowledge him. I really want you to acknowledge him. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Reliable God. Reliable. God. 
person open your mouth in one minute call that challenge by name and tell it i will walk upon you come on go ahead and pray don't be afraid call it by name look it in the eye and say barrenness one day you will be my testimony oh yes oh yes it doesn't come to kill hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please give god a shout of praise and sit down God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Take this key. Go back with it. And what challenges fear you? Fear you. Because you'll find out that nothing is as big as it looks. Let me tell you, I've gone through too many things in my life to tell you no challenge can kill by itself until you direct the gun and shoot it at yourself i have confidence in you jesus i have confidence in you savior i have confidence in you anytime and any day i have confidence in you Jesus, Jesus, I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Let me tell you something. The next time you see men laughing at you, don't worry. There is already a scripture. It says, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Rejoice not over me. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, do I fall, yet I will rise. There is a mechanism in the kingdom that remedies for it. Aya. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He had resurrected. Others were talking about his death. On his way to Emmaus, they were busy discussing the man who died. And he said, gentlemen, I'm already have a, a reason. This is outdated curriculum. That's how some people will sit down while they are discussing and saying, ah, this lady now, now wow, I don't know. Or while they are discussing, your text will just come. My God has done it again. The miracle worker has done it again. Please sit down. You see, it is this understanding that can make two people come again anybody come it is this understanding come that can make two people walk with me walk through life someone stands at a point where people say he cannot cross and another person continues going because there is something this guy knows they at a point they were at the same level but while this guy was praising his way to the next dimension this one was complaining listen let me teach you something the bible says in acts chapter 16 listen that paul and silas they held them bound four guards even if the chains break those guards will kill you the bible says they prayed and they sang it was allowed and the prisoners had them is it in your bible all of a sudden the Bible says there was an earthquake. It hit the prison. This is the part I like. It says, and all doors opened. How many doors? It's in your Bible. It says when they sang and the earthquake came, all doors opened. You can praise your way out of any pain. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. 
Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as the Lord most high. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. Just hurry up, sir. Sit down, sit down, sit down. So we'll hurry up. I tell you, this thing fired my spirit myself. So after 10 years, he's still rising. As if the devil does not exist. I watched a video of Bishop Oyedeko this morning preparing his congregation. That was before their 35th anniversary. 35 years of living as if Satan does not exist. And we had a ministration on Sunday. The 35th anniversary was this was the last Sunday. I made sure I streamed and I followed before I went for the meeting. While I was bathing, I took my laptop. It was streaming so that I would hear from the bathroom in our hotel room before I went out. Kenneth Copeland was preaching. And then I was listening. Before Kenneth Copeland came, they danced their way around the stage to the shame of the devil. And I saw his wife, who once died, but now alive, dancing together, strong and alive. Our mother was dancing to the shame of the devil. When you dance before your enemy, you frustrate them. Please, stop wasting your tears. You have cried before every other person but God. I forbid you from crying before men. There is nothing you are going through that is new under the sun. Please hear me. Until you find the key that opens that door, you may remain in that captivity forever. Number what? The law of mastery and competence. Let's hurry up. Proverbs 18 verse 16. The fourth law I want to teach you, secrets of the kingdom. The law of mastery and competence. Proverbs 18 verse 16. The gift of a man makes room for him. Please come. I have to use them. Three of you, any three of you, just come. Watch this. I want to illustrate this scripture. watch this call this the table of greatness and the table of life the space is already full there is no space for anyone are we together anybody who must go to the table of greatness must show what he's taking along with him so the bible says the concept of something for nothing is armed robbery there must be something you must carry your contribution to life and here's how the Bible puts it. The gift of a man, watch this, will make room for him. Are you seeing that? There was no space, but your gift will push and create a space for you in life. The key to mediocrity is to want everything and contribute nothing. Mediocrity and hardship in life stems from a mentality that wants everything done for you but with no contribution to life your relevance is tied to your contribution to the purposes of god and the betterment of humanity are we together i was teaching at a kingdom wealth summit in joss and i said any man that ever says preachers should not be rich god will punish him you know there are people who especially when they look at some of us who are young they just say forget about all these young boys so they are all idiots just leave them they know what they are doing and they give an idea like these people are fraudulent they are drug barons they are this and that and that or 419 people know the measure of your worth and your greatness in life hear me please is tied to your contribution are we together you pay a carpenter 
5,000 naira for fixing your door because that's how much you perceive his contribution to be. But you pay a pilot 500,000 from the day he graduates. He starts collecting 500,000. You know why? Because 175 people are trusting their destinies for one hour and he's the one driving it. And they are paying him and saying, you better make sure you read well. To carry the destiny of presidents, prime ministers, royalties, politicians. Flying is something that you can't do anything about. You just pray. If the pilot sleeps or he's careless or something happens, you are gone. So they pay him 500,000 for taking that risk. When they are carrying out a neurosurgery, you pay between 3.5 to maybe 8 million because of the enormity of what that doctor is doing. Are we together? Yes. Listen. Our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contributions and our service. I know why God is blessing me as a preacher. It's not because I'm preaching the gospel. It's because I'm adding value to lives. My value may be spiritual. If you think it's easy to cast out devil's it. If you think it's easy to look at a sick body and say be healed. And he goes to the hospital and finds out that HIV has left him. You do it. Let me tell you, if your anointing is only for um, children, fruit of the womb, is enough to employ you for your lifetime. Because that is, that is a contribution. Now the question I want to ask you is, every man can know where you stand by how much you are contributing. It's wickedness to demand millions when your contribution has not matched that level. There's no point praying. Are we together? Yes. As I stay in the secret place and I learn more about the mysteries of the kingdom, I am equipped by grace to contribute more. And as I contribute more, different kinds of rewards come back. Now, that's not my motivation. That's why you don't pay me for teaching. But whether I sell it or it's given free, I am authorized to be rewarded. Listen, your greatness in life is tied, is a direct measure of your contribution. If at any point in your life, you are not satisfied with your level, as far as greatness is concerned, then it means you have to do something to your contribution. Whose life is becoming better because you are alive? Every day I get up, someone's life is changing because I'm alive. And you wonder why somebody will bless me? Is that not wickedness? You type a letter for a man for one month. He gives you 100,000. You call yourself a secretary. I'm changing the mindsets of people. And changing the mindsets of their generation. And someone sows one million and you say it's wickedness. Think about it. And we have all these, these junk people who carry typewriter, carry their laptops and say men of God are wearing this and that and doing this and not doing anything. Because to them, they think we are just joking on stage. And the person who is talking did not sell his Android device to give mission field. But he's saying the man of God should sell his watch or his car. Let me tell you. The fivefold ministry is secondary to no other ministry on earth. The second most noble call after the call of ministry is the call of a monarch. Then presidents of whatever nation. The president is only there for four years. After four years, he's stripped of his authority and relevance. Only a monarch is close to a true man of God irrelevance please make no mistakes to think genuine men of god are nuisance to society go to a seminar and find out how much you will pay for what i'm teaching you now and see the millions of naira that you will have to pay for your mindset being corrected and those guys do not have the grace the anointing equivalent to help you 
our greatness in life is not measured by connection it's measured by our contribution so you can know right where you are seated how far you are in life and not be angry when you see another person i've not slept i've not slept properly i think maybe in the last one or two weeks because we've been traveling it was about a week since i was in zaria we returned back yesterday returned back had to just take my bath and rush for school of ministry was with them till in the evening and i returned back this morning had a lot of things to do we are supposed to be off to the airport tomorrow to Ibadan. But then I was happy hearing that um, the program has been shifted. That's contribution, brothers and sisters. That's contribution. Echimi's wife made cake for me. She makes cakes. Beautiful cakes. That's her contribution. I will pay her because I cannot bake it. The day I'm tired of paying her, I learn how to bake it. Are we together? Let me tell you why many people are poor in the kingdom. You are not contributing anything. So whoever you must receive from, you have to give something. Are we together? Watch this. Please lend this. This is a little money. Let me use it for an example. I have this money. Watch this. This is life. Whoever can contribute to life must benefit from it. Financially and otherwise, I'm just using this to represent fulfillment. Are we together? Now, they pay me salary. Please give me back. They pay me... No, 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 no. Listen, listen. They pay me salary. Are we together? I'm not providing any service. So I go to someone to fix my car. He's contributing. He takes from the salary. I go to the market woman who had enough sense to risk herself and sit down in the market. I pay her. Are we together now? All kinds of things are happening to me. I now, because I'm not a practitioner of the word, I'm falling sick. I'm not typing. I think pastors are idiot. What happens? The devourer is destroying me. The remaining part of the salary goes to the doctor. Watch this. Are we listening? What is it to me? Nothing. This is a measure of how much I've contributed to life. Nothing. That's why it always finishes. Are we together? There's no magic about satisfaction and greatness. The day I create something that forces him to give me back my money, he will need it so he will come to me and give me back. Something I'm doing will make her bring it back. Something I'm doing will make it bring it back. What is that something? If you don't have it, stop wondering why you are poor. Our rewards in life, both in terms of money, honor, and the sense of fulfillment, is tied to your contribution. I will never feel inferior in life because if I do not carry any other thing, I have an anointing. I have an anointing that the nations need and they will need it forever. It is needed in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. The precepts of the kingdom that have been communicated to me, there is a demand for it. That's why you are gathered here. That's why not even the rain took you back to your house. Are we together? It's a measure of how much you need this. Please hear me. Begin to sharpen your gifts and abilities and tell yourself, I'm rising to that position of greatness. I will take something in my hands that will veto my background and open the doors of greatness for me. Is God speaking to someone now? There are doctors here. The moment they graduate, for those who are student doctors, there is a job for them. Because the amount of frustration from disobeying the word of God has increased their market. In the, num the amount of tranquilizers that are consumed every time, high blood pressure now affects teenagers. Good business for doctors. Darkness shall cover the earth. What do you have? If I call you right now, please three of you stand up. One, two, three. And I tell you, what do you have to contribute to life that will make you relevant? It is wickedness to want to stand here with nothing to contribute. 
so i come to you and you give me the word of god and change my mind you are blessed i come to you and you give me a sense of leadership and innovation you are blessed i come to you and um maybe you solve my security problems and then you come to me and i said don't worry i'm, I'm here i mean it's just a, it's just a political thing that's wickedness listen your greatness is tied to your gifts the gift of a man when discovered when refined please sit down and when deployed will make room for him scriptures cannot be broken has nothing to do with background has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with territorial limitations your gift has equal value in every territory I love people I admire them but not intimidated by any because the gift of God in me does not need refrigeration I don't need electricity for it to come up are we together if you go to the filling station and there's no light you will kill there because they need electricity are we together now if you want a photocopying machine and light goes off and there's no gen nothing for you but bring a demon possessed person whether i'm sleeping or I'm, I'm awake that spirit is living at that point bring somebody whose mind is messed up i can get him born again and teach him the precepts of the kingdom that's value you may not be called into the fivefold ministry are we together but your value will change the money in your hand your value will change everything in your life please write it down i have an assignment this week to discover every gift god has put in me and to serve my generation with that gift and exit myself out of the realm of inferiority and pain and competition we compete with ourselves we hate ourselves there's no need for that there is enough space in fact life is still needing great men are we together life is still needing great men there are people thank you there are people who are looking for this die hard there was a day we looked for this it never came i only wanted 30 naira out of this it didn't come because I was not contributing anything substantial. Yet I wanted to be blessed. It was against the law of God. But today it cannot stop coming to me. Even if I drive it, it will not go. Why? Value. For as long as there is one devil on earth, I will not be poor. For as long as there is one person's mind that needs to be straightened, it's called value. Please hear me. Do you know the Holy Ghost is within you and his presence makes you valuable? The presence of the Holy Ghost gives you the ability to provide supernatural solutions to different dimensions of life's problem. You should be fulfilled. But you watch how many men are frustrated in our society. They get up in the morning and they are angry. Bus conductors, civil servants who are angry going to do a job they don't like everybody angry we vent it at our husbands vent it at our wives on serious pastors vent it at their members he's the holy ghost spirit of the living god he's the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings is the Holy Ghost seal of the age to come? You're changing everything in obedience to God. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. You're the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. You're the Holy Ghost. Scepter of the King of Kings, you're the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're 
point number one lord i'm living this level forever on the strength of the mysteries you are giving me lift your voice and pray i live this level forever i live this level forever there is a level of the anointing that i need to step into total surrender is the key to that level there is a level of relevance for the kingdom that I need to step into. Your value, your contribution is the key to that level. There is a level of transformation that I need in my life. The key is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. To have your ideologies and paradigms change make sure you are praying hallelujah hallelujah i like you to pray and say father from tonight anything that exalts itself above you in my life no matter what it is i bring it down to its rightful place lift your voice and pray it could be ministry it could be business lord i come against that thing stopping the anointing from multiplying in my life stopping my ranking in the spirit Pray every idol taking the place of God in my life. I come against it. I come against it. I come against it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and challenge every paradigm. He said, pulling down every stronghold. Stronghold. Something here is creating imaginary giants in your life. Something here is creating imaginary giants. When light comes, you will find out that it was never a giant. I like you to cry and say, Lord, beyond my culture, change my mind beyond my exposure as a Nigerian may your word challenge my paradigms my ideology that came from my failures that came from my background that came from my village my African uh, the, the fact that I'm a, I'm a Nigerian the limitation that came with my territory As we behold him in a mirror we are changed we are changed from glory to glory hallelujah hallelujah the final prayer point you are going to call for every dormant gift in you some of you are sitting in an ocean but you are begging for a cup of water where is that gift that will end poverty in my life where is that gift that will end inferiority oh god reveal it in my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray that ability of the spirit our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life will always be in 
exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life our rewards in life our relevance in life our greatness in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Hallelujah. I've said it again and again. Koinonia will build you to, be, to become a complete kingdom ambassador. Not just that you are anointed and your finances are suffering. Not just that you are doing well financially and failing in relationships. Not just that you are doing well in relationships and failing intellectually. There can be complete balance growth. You can be a multi-millionaire for the kingdom, yet not carried away by its influence in your mind. And you can be passionate about the kingdom and what it represents. Having a personal relationship with God and then excelling in family, excelling in leadership, becoming an agent of national transformation. It says, Savior shall arise out of Zion. And he said they shall judge the mount of Esau. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. The kind of encounter. You have never had with the Holy Ghost. I pray in this season. Step into that level of encounter. Step into that level of encounter. Step into that level of encounter. An encounter that will take your prayer life, your word life, to a dimension you have never seen. I release upon you the grace for that encounter. Number two, I pray for you. The level of transformation that it takes to crumble the giants before you. Let me tell you, many giants we so honor are imaginary. They are not real. The level of transformation it takes for you to rise to a point where you do what has never been done in your family. You do what has never been done in your lineage. Receive the grace for that kind of transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Hear me. That spirit that keeps telling you you have to be like them. Everybody was a failure. You are also like them. I like you to shout no way shout it no way listen my bible says when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up there is something you know that can take you out of your background the last prayer for you and i'm praying this from the depth of my spirit the hands that lifted you will uphold you to the end you will not be afraid listen hear me ordinary men found what god put in them and it changed the course of their lives this is one of the testimonies you probably would not need me except for what he has put in me like he did to me i pray whatever god must do to you to bring out that anointing, that grace, that illumination that will make you an international figure to the shame of the devil. That anointing, that anointing, please lift your hand. Something is coming upon you now. I want to release a grace. Get ready right now. At the count of three, the grace the unction right now receive it receive that grace now 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 right now shabakata receive that grace wherever you are inside outside an impartation let deep call on to deep that grace that grace your potentials your abilities the anointing of the holy ghost that distinguishes you in the name of jesus I command it I command it I command it I release it 
right now right now I command it Shakatabaya Mandekebretia no more failure no more failure I take you out by prophecy out of the realm of mediocrity out of the realm of failure I speak over your destiny whoever has ignored your grace I stand under this apostolic anointing and I pray your life will force them to swallow their words they told Nathaniel can anything good come out of Nazareth I prophesy over someone here quarter to shame may your gift bail you out quarter to shame may your gift bail you out Hallelujah. god is not only a great god god is not only a mighty god he is a god of patterns oftentimes we'll see in scripture that he hardly does the same thing twice when he starts a process he will reveal it as a dimension of himself and then he will surround it with a spiritual pattern for its continuity are we together now he made the first man he made the second the first man and the first woman and never had to put his hand to mold and make a man again he designed a pattern in them for the continuity of the human race are we together now he did the first planting the first watering and created a pattern around agriculture that makes for supplies god is a god of patterns patterns are the correct way things are done patterns they are the pathways that guarantee predictable outcomes that means that it is on the strength of patterns that our christian experiences find predictability and even continuity in the dealings of god with men you may want to listen and then write in the dealings of god with men please listen we are not at liberty to invent our way of knowing and following god when it has to do with walking with god creativity is not needed it is obedience and surrender is when it has to do with legislating on behalf of the kingdom then you can bring in your creativity but as far as following god is concerned you need obedience and adherence men are not at liberty to invent their way of walking with god there is a prescribed way to walk with god in order to get results and then in order to leave a foot a divine pattern has been adhered to success is proof that a divine pattern has been adhered to blessings to you minister dunsin thank you i love you thank you for coming thank you sir hallelujah success at any level is proof that a divine pattern has been adhered to failure is also proof that a divine pattern has been ignored violated or not thoroughly followed i'll come again failure is proof that a divine pattern has been ignored way he is not only truth he's not only life he is the way are we together now in genesis chapter 4 probably the first authentic representation of a man's willful violation of god's pattern outside of the garden genesis chapter 4 please we'll read very quickly the first seven verses the bible says and adam knew his wife eve and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord and she again bare his brother abel 
and abel was a keeper of sheep the bible says but cain was a tiller of the ground follow the story verse 3 it says and in the process of time it came to pass that cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the lord so he's talking about offerings giving five verse 4 says and abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof and then the bible makes a very interesting statement it says and the lord had respect regard unto abel and to his offering first the man then his activity the bible says but unto cain and to his offering he had not respect as a result cain was very wrought and his countenance fell please keep verse 5 very interesting statement there are consequences for violating divine patterns there are consequences for being and living in ignorance this is one of it frustration your christian experience becomes a plethora of frustrations from one cycle of frustration to the other cain was sad and angry why because his life was not producing the kind of result he wanted verse 6 and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? Why art thou angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7 is a very powerful instruction. If thou doest well, that means if you do what you do according to pattern, shall thou not be accepted? And if you do not do well, be careful. Your frustration will lead you to a point where sin lies at your door. Frustration that is prolonged has a consequence. It will push you into all kinds of things. Bitterness, envy, anger. It says, Cain, the cure for all these things that are happening to you is to understand divine patterns because that outcome can also be a possibility in your life. Sin lieth at your door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. When you read the other part of the story, the Bible says, Cain killed Abel. Divine patterns, if violated, have severe consequences. We're dealing with the mysteries of the kingdom, but it's important for us to understand because you see, results in this kingdom do not just happen. Please understand this. Results are very methodical. Results are predictable because they, they happen at the instance of spiritual patterns. Results are not an issue of opinions. They are not just an issue of, um, you know, sociological or tribal or whatever affiliations. Whoever can subscribe to that pattern, there is a guarantee. There is an investment of God's integrity upon his patterns. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. Exodus chapter 25. Moses receives an instruction to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. We'll read verse 9 and then we'll jump to verse 40. Exodus chapter 25. It says, according to all that I show you, Moses is receiving an instruction now. After the pattern of the tabernacle, it says, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so thou shalt make it. So to build the tabernacle in the wilderness Moses was taken in the spirit to see the tabernacle in heaven and he said make sure you sustain that same pattern and then verse 40 says and look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown unto thee on the mount let me tell you this this is very powerful because this is a principle that is also used in witchcraft and occultism I'm not here, to, we're not discussing demonology tonight, but let me explain something. When someone goes to meet a herbalist, please look up, and says, I want to take a charm or I want to introduce a spirit to my house. Do you know what happens? The victim does not even know what is happening. They conjure spirits, and those spirits reveal the pattern that simulates their current environment. They want to come to your house. They can't come to your house till your house looks like where they currently are. So the native doctor he sustains intelligence through divination by conjuring all the substances, spiritually and physically, that can simulate the current habitation of that spirit. 
Are we together? You take a token of that atmosphere to your house. Now, whether the spirit is in your house or where it was, it does not know the difference again. Because whether it's in your house or it's in that place, the pattern that makes for his presence is already there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Mm. This is how it works. So God is saying, if you want me to feel at home in that wilderness, you must be able to reproduce a pattern where there is almost no difference whether I'm sitting on my throne or I'm with you in that wilderness. Moses, if it's my presence you want to secure, subscribe to my patterns. Are we together now? Mm. Exodus chapter 40. We'll read verse 16, then we jump to 33 to see the miracle when we adhere to patterns. Exodus 40, let's start from verse 16, then we jump to 33. Please give it to us. Exodus 40, 16. Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Watch this. 33. This was the last instruction being adhered to now. And he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work according to pattern. The result... 34 the bible says and then a cloud can you imagine that god was watching and never came until the last peg was put according to pattern then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle 35 the bible says and moses was not able to enter the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle spiritual patterns there is a pattern for genuine salvation is that true you don't get saved the way you want there is a prescribed pattern for instance romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 gives us the biblical pattern the pathway to receiving jesus if you receive him any other way you can be sure according to scripture you are not saved are we together you can verify whether an individual is saved. Not just by looking at the individual's personality. You check if the pattern that leads to salvation was adhered to. There is something in um, when those who are in manufacturing, there is something called quality control. Am I correct? Quality control insists that the patterns are kept to the letter. So when the products are made, they pass through a quality control department and their assignment is to verify. Was everything done and made correctly? They can detect defections and then send it back and say, no, 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 we cannot send this because this is an indictment on our reputation and our image. Patterns, the spiritual quality control systems that guarantee that what comes out of it has the signature of God. The glory of God. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. We don't just grow anyhow in this kingdom. There is a methodical spiritual approach that was given to the saints. That if you administer it like a drug to any spiritual patient, there is a guarantee. We have medical personnel here. We have doctors. And regardless the individual... In most cases when an individual says, I have malaria or I have whatever sickness... The, there, are, there are drugs that have already been designed. Is that true? The doctor or the manufacturer does not have to be there with you. Provided it passed from them or recommended by their intelligence, they know it will work for you. So you don't need to scratch your head wondering, will this work? It's been tested. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. You can know you are growing not just because you've stayed long in church, not just because you have appointments in church. You can know you are growing if and when you subscribe to the spiritual pattern. And according to scripture, the pattern that is made for growth is called doctrine. If you are not receiving the administration of doctrine, the, the possibility for growth is not there, regardless where you are. Doctrine is the course curriculum that builds the believer into maturity. Are we blessed? There is a pattern for church growth. For instance, a ministry does not just grow. There is a spiritual pattern that makes it happen. 
A company does not just grow. A business does not just grow. No, there are patterns for it. One of the keys that control it, for instance, is I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he says, I will draw men. So the more you hide behind the veil and you allow Jesus to be seen and to be lifted up, there is a promise that he will draw men to himself. There is a pattern for wealth and abundance. Takes more than desire. Takes more than business. Takes more than investments. Takes more than a job to be transgenerationally blessed. There is a spiritual pattern. There is an economic system in this kingdom by which the saints rise. It's not subject to, it has no prejudice attached to it. That whoever like Cain receiving a warning from God, whoever can subscribe to it with understanding, inevitably will emerge carrying that testimony. There is a pattern for building your faith. If your faith is small, if your faith is weak, you are violating a spiritual pattern that makes for the development of your faith. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith does not just grow by hearing alone. But ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. You have to know how it comes. You have to know how it grows. You have to know how it is administered. Is God blessing us tonight? There is a pattern for the anointing. This probably is one of the sincere desires for many people, especially in the body of Christ. Do you know, respectfully speaking, probably eight or ten out of people who come uh, seeking prayer, especially those in ministry, what they really want, and, and, and they are very sincere. They will tell me, Apostle, what I desire is the anointing. I want the anointing is in an unusual way, in an unusual degree. Very sincere desire, but there is a pattern. Just because it comes from heaven does not mean it comes anyhow. Even in heaven, there are patterns. You don't walk into the throne room just because Jesus is there. No, there are patterns. You never find angels just roaming around the throne room because it's, it's no, 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 no. There is an order. There is an ordinance. There are patterns. Remember, Satan is not there. The construction of heaven was done with a pattern. The names of the 12 apostles being the foundation itself. There is a way the anointing comes. There is a way the anointing increases. There is a way the anointing is administered. Just having a desire does not necessarily bring the anointing. There are different levels of the anointing. There are different dimensions of the anointing. Please pay attention. Just because you enjoy a dimension of the anointing does not mean it can do everything in your life. No. Are we together? Spiritual patterns. There is a pattern for activating favor in your life. Favor with God and favor with men. Luke 2.52. The Bible declares that Jesus increased. So we can increase in wisdom, in stature, and the Bible says in favor with God and with men. If you have favor with God alone, like you may have heard me say, you will have encounters, you will have visions, but you will really suffer as far as this life is concerned. You need favor with men. Favor does not just happen. I think one of the misunderstood subjects not the only one, but one of the many misunderstood subjects in the body of Christ is the subject of favor. For a very, very long time, respectfully speaking, we thought that favor just happens just like that. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There is an intentional formula. For many years, we kept calling breakthrough favor. If it happens only once, it's not favor. It must be repeated to be favor regardless the surrounding circumstances proverbs 13 15 the bible says good understanding giveth favor good understanding that is the mother that bets this child called favor it says transgression is also a pregnant woman that can give birth to something called hardship hardship does not just happen it is a direct product of violating certain laws Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor 
the violator of patterns is hard. There is a pattern for building and maintaining relationships. They don't just happen. Is that true? Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, for instance, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? The word agreed means um, compatible, similarity in viewpoints. That he that wants friends, your fool shall be destroyed. Do not be deceived, the Bible declares, it said, good company. There is a pattern for a model home. It does not just happen. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said his seed shall be mighty upon earth. He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. The generation, not just the children, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches, the next verse says, shall be in his house. And yet his righteousness endures forever. There is a pattern for restoration. There is a pattern for restoration. The possibility of recovery is a reality and, and gone can come back. I prophesied as I was commanded Ezekiel 37 and he said there was a... Are we together? Yes. There is a pattern for exemption. It can come upon you and make you to testify that there is a lifting up. Is it in your Bible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That a thou behold the reward of the wicked. These are patterns. It is the presence of work of victory if and only when you understand the patterns that this life demands. Safe, but you can have abundant life. Hmm. Are we blessed? He says, I am come, the thief cometh not, John 10, 10, but for to steal, have abundant life. Life overflowing, some versions will say. You only succeed in this kingdom. To the degree to which you build according to pattern. Please pay attention. The Lord is edifying us tonight. I can trust the works of my hands. I can trust my tomorrow. Not just because I'm the one living it out. But because of the patterns I know I am following. If you are not following divine patterns, there is no guarantee for success. Even if it looks successful, you will be surprised at the instance at which it will change. There is a way that seemeth right. Seemeth right means there is some ray of hope as you look at it. But it's at the end you will know you have been wasting your time. Write this down. Building according to pattern guarantees three things. Very quickly. Building according to pattern guarantees three things. Number one, the glory of God. The manifestation of the glory of God. As we read earlier on in Exodus chapter 40, 16 and then 33 to 35. Building according to pattern secures and guarantees the glory of God. The manifest presence of God. Every time the glory of God shows up in a place... In a life, in a ministry, in a family, it comes as an attestation, as a validation that divine patterns have been followed. Please listen carefully. You will never experience the glory of God in your life until divine patterns are kept. Hmm. So if I see the favor of God in my life, if I see extraordinary results in my life, they come not just in honor to my prayer and my request alone. They come as tokens of validation. Proofs that I have worked in keeping with the divine patterns that make for these possibilities. You must trust God for grace to stop shadow boxing. God by this truth is bringing us to a point of mastery where there can be predictability to your Christian experience. Divine patterns securing the glory of God. Moses, you want to see my glory in that tabernacle in the wilderness? There is a way that you can engage my patterns and you will see my glory. Testimonies that happen in church every week is more than just the anointing of a man. There are patterns that are followed. You see, let me tell you this. 
creation was designed to honor these patterns. Are you aware of that? That as have hazard as life and living looks, they were designed. It's like they are codes of possibilities. Creation will remain disobedient to you until they find you walking in keeping with this pattern. There are enough men to favor you, but they will not come until the pattern that attracts favor is kept. You will be surprised how easy it is for you to be lifted and yet you remain on the ground for a long time. But the day you find the key, then Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 becomes your testimony. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them, not some, all them that looked upon her. To the point where in verse 17, even the king could not resist that charm-like grace. The Bible says the king loved Esther above all the women. She obtained grace and favor in his sight. My head thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil. I raised this song because I just saw a jar. I just saw a jar with oil dripping on it. I don't know who that grace is for, but whilst you are sitting, I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names. I just spoke about this Esther anointing and I saw a jar. That's why I raised that song. Father, I don't know how many people here who must drink of this grace, but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and by the spirit of faith. May that unction come upon your life now. May that grace come upon your life now. Please sit down. The proof of favor is not money. No. The proof of favor is the hearts of men. When God gives you the heart of men, you are really favored. Are we blessed? We must become, as I would always say, spiritual archaeologists like the magi look into the sky to discern signs what is responsible for results what is responsible for lifting i spent my life searching these mysteries of the kingdom trying to understand the patterns that connect to results not wanting to live my life shadow boxing and guessing there has to be a way out Please help those who start running now under the anointing. I just saw a vision and I just saw like, it's like light just falling on people. This is what I'm saying. Just help them. We'll continue the teaching, but I just saw this in the spirit. It's, it's, it's an impartation. God is bringing that grace. Please help them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. 18 18 people this is what i'm saying oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yahweh oh yeah yeah say oh yeah yeah yahweh Oh, I say, oh, yeah, yeah. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup, my destiny run it over, run it over. I continue to pray this, but. I want you to bring this set of people out who are still preaching. There is an unction for speed that is coming on people right now. They will begin to run by the Spirit of God. The Lord is breaking circles. These are patterns. Bring them out. Speed to your feet. Giving you acceleration in life. 
acceleration in destiny please help them in the name of jesus christ bring them i want to speak over their life we're still teaching you came to church this is the house of god the gates of heaven i decree and declare speed speed to destinies speed to men i shift you acceleration 10 years in one please believe it believe it believe it it says if you believe you will see the glory of god speed and acceleration to your life in the name of jesus the christ of god in the name of jesus the christ of god all the overflows outside following from any nation i decree and declare speed to your destiny speed to your destiny encounter that grace that shift men encounter that grace that can shift businesses speed to your christian experience pray in the spirit in one minute receive it for your life father in the name of jesus acceleration by the spirit for my destiny Shabbatis, Katapas, Katabakato, Sabratastia, Shagatabakata, Koto Prontos, Kotobakata. I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word to perform. I will hasten my word to perform. I will hasten my word. Give speed to my speakings. Give speed to my prophecies. For all those who are out and under the anointing, I declare the same way the Holy Ghost located you. I declare speed, speed with results. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Some of you are representing families. Some of you are representing ministries. You are representing businesses. May that grace speak for you. No power in existence will stop you from walking in this anointing. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Listen, speed is one of the dominion systems over time because the unit of destiny is time. And everything that lacks time, speed is more than progress. Speed, dominion over time. In the name of Jesus, let it be. We declared by the spirit of grace. You came to church to encounter grace. And we prophesy by the God of heaven. Just like the dear man of God, Minister Nosa sang, Now your way is his way to, act, to, to bring speed to our lives. Everything standing your way not allowing you to experience speed i lift my hands to the god of our covenant and i declare it must clear out of the way right now for you it must clear out of the way now for you every enchantment every divination every covenant activities of familiar spirits sitting on your destiny i will not let you move in the name of jesus i move it for your sake i move it for your sake I move it for your sake. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your hey, what hey is your name? Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. 
just breathe your grace upon me breathe just breathe your grace upon me breathe your hand my head is your name Hallelujah. Who is Jane? I'm hearing a name, Jane. Who is that? Jane. We'll be seated shortly. Jane. Kali Sani Shalam Brakatos Kete Bariata. This person I'm seeing is like an elderly woman. No, this is not a young lady, but I'll pray for you. I will pray for you but please come just a few minutes will be back seated is God wasting your time sir look at me this man look at me the chains that hold the works of your hands I bring judgment upon them now in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I release you by the spirit of grace go and return with testimonies your life will so shift you will wonder and marvel in the name of Jesus Christ can I pray for you ma I hope you're not embarrassed that I'm calling you in the name of Jesus there is a name above all names there is a name above all names madam shout Jesus as loud as you can I declare may grace come upon you and I release you by this by this shout in the name of Jesus step into the realms of favor for you and for your family for you and for your family my dear I remove that I'm seeing something that looks like a crown but it's not of God I remove it from your head now this lady out of her life now in the name of Jesus Christ I give the chains falling. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Abuja. Abuja here. Yes, sir. Did you come alone? Yes, sir. Come. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Just calm down. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Two things. Number one, God is going to take something out of your stomach. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That demonic thing that is growing to become a fibroid, God wants to cause it now. Number two, I want to pray for you. I'm seeing you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a woman, but I'm not seeing a face. This is something that has covered your glory. I want to pray for you. I use as a point of contact. If there is anyone here, the devil has covered your glory. You are among men that can give you visibility, but something is covering you. I bow my knees to the God of heaven and I tear that fell into peace. I tear that fell into pieces. I tear, I tear that fell into pieces. Hallelujah. Let it be so for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who have come out, I decree and declare. For whatever reason you came out, let there be miracles for you. Supernatural miracles. In Jesus' name. What do you do, sir? Huh? Businessman, sir. Businessman. I have an oil and gas firm, sir. In just, I just asked you what you do. I want to pray for you. Thank you, sir. I'm seeing you climb a ladder that breaks and brings you down. Look at me. I don't know you all, sir. But I want to pray for you. Here, God makes men. He doesn't just bring made people. He makes men. Stand up. What will happen to you between now and August will surprise you. I'm saying it in the open. I release that grace. Go back to the oil and gas sector with that grace. Go and excel. Shift systems and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is God that causes men to advance nobody has the power in himself to advance please hear me it is not within the power of men to move beyond certain points mama 
the Lord is asking me to pray for you let mama come this is a whole family I don't know what is it but God is visiting this family all of you come out I'm seen by the spirit I don't know you all. are you alone ma look at me yes I'm alone where are your children one is in London the other ones are in Abujai please shift let me talk to mama mama I want to pray for you shame and reproach I'm saying it in the open whatever wants to turn your children to become instruments of shame and reproach I stand by the God of heaven I cancel it right now I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus number two mama you don't have any business with dead people coming to you in dreams while you are sleeping I declare in the name of Jesus every covenant that connects you to the grave I'm using mama to pray for anyone here the voice of the grave is calling you or calling your loved ones you are seeing the faces of dead men in the name of Jesus I break that connection forever I break that connection forever for the living and the dead have nothing in common I separate you by the blood of the eternal covenant Who is Deborah? Deborah. I'm hearing a name, Deborah. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what gets better? And if our God is for us, then who hallelujah just let me two minutes we are done two of you the power of God is going to come on you eh? I'll pray for everybody but I can imagine that there are so many Deborahs you can just stand I know all of you are Deborahs but we'll just pray sometimes God just does these things but there are two of you right now as I'm speaking the angel of the Lord is pouring oil on your head and the power of God is going to come upon you there are activations happening to two of you it's not something you can stand we're talking of the power of the Holy Spirit here two of you may the sound of reproach help her not be heard in your life again that lady under the anointing made the sound of reproach from you and your family not be heard anymore I pray for all of you who have come out by this prophetic word in the name of Jesus go back and experience victory go back and experience victory God who located you is also giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ where are you from my sister where are you from? Kaduna Road, sir. Huh? Kaduna Road. I come from Kaduna Road. From where? Kaduna Road. No, no, no. Where are you from? State from of Kogi origin. State, Kogi. I want to pray for you that everything that is not the planting of God, huh? In the name, I'm not a prophet of doom. Don't be afraid. I decree and declare anything that wants to bring you down and bring your family to the grave, I cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are out, may the Lord grant you victory in Jesus' name. Please go back to your seat rejoicing very quickly. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's the mother or the person who is here. Your son has written jam, jam, seven times, no admission. They try and try and nothing happens. I don't know if the individual is here or I just want to break that, that demonic hold right now and then we'll sit down and listen. Number two, well, this, this may not be something I'll say publicly, but we have to pray. I'm seeing a politician in serious trouble. We have to pray. We have to pray. The spirit of the waster in the name of Jesus provided you are under this influence we declare that for the sake of the grace and the mercy of god 
everything that wants to cause the sword you do not live by the sword and you will not die by the sword in the name of Jesus Christ the cause of the waster will follow them in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God the cause of the waster will follow them in the name of Jesus can we sit down to continue please sit down God bless you I rebuke that spirit that lady let me pray for her the lady on green there yeah. I command that devil let her go now release her destiny give her peace in Jesus name God bless you you can take them including this one now in Jesus name now please pay attention we're discussing something here spiritual patterns guarantee the glory of God every time his glory is revealed it is proof that his patterns have been kept number two compliance to spiritual patterns guarantees sustainable results sustainable results Matthew chapter 7 please give us verse 24 to 27 Matthew chapter 7 therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine the Bible says and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock reading to 27 and the rain descended listen carefully and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house everything that happened to the other fellow building on sand happened to this same man the Bible says and it fell not why for it was was founded upon a rock 26 and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand last verse and the rain descended the floods came the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell here's what the Bible says and great was the fall of it You must trust God for grace to get out of these balloon results up today down tomorrow are we together now the Bible declares that the path of the just can be as a shining light when it is not built by patterns it will not last I assure you no matter how flamboyant it looks don't trust it because of the aesthetics trust it because of the patterns that when the rain comes when the wind blows it will stand because it was built upon the rock ministry let it be built upon patterns there are many people for instance who start ministry just because they heard the voice of God <laughs> that looks very spiritual but it's a dangerous motivation for ministry God told me go and start ministry that's wonderful so why did you start the ministry i know that god told me i am sending you to heal the sick i am sending you to be an evangelist the voice of god must submit to the patterns for church growth otherwise you will be surprised that even though it is god sending you you will suffer as if it's not his voice is not in your life are we together there are many sincere people who are under all kinds of limitations in life because they exalted prophecy they exalted the speakings of spirits they exalted the advices of men even well-intentioned people above the patterns of God hear me if you never hear any audible voice and all you do is submit to the integrity of scripture you will have the result that is greater than one who hears every day and does not walk in the patterns listen to what I'm telling you Africa is a place of a lot of spirituality delving now into superstition our strength is based on the numerous noise of voices sincere and insincere all together none of them let me tell you no matter how well meaning sustains the ability to keep a man you must subscribe to the patterns no matter who prophesies or blesses your business it does not sustain the ability to produce results transgenerationally until in addition to that voice and that prophecy you subscribe to the pattern that makes for longevity of anything 
Are we together? Patterns are powerful. Sustainable results. Fruits that abide. You want to build something that lasts. Please look up. You want to be in ministry or in business or in whatever endeavor you are involved in for a very long time. Leaders are intentional people. They are men of mastery. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No. Patterns. When you have the patterns, you cannot only perpetuate the results. You can reproduce them anywhere regardless. It is true. It is true. Patterns give you sustainability, look up please, and predictability to your result. When you are up today and down tomorrow, favor today, disfavor tomorrow, laughing today, smiling tomorrow, there's too much amateurism and guesswork in your work. You have to back up and begin to study the patterns that bring predictability to your life. Are we together? For instance, using business people as a case study. There are many wealthy and blessed people today who rose to the ranks of, of financial abundance through knowledge. They can reproduce and perpetuate their result regardless the geographic region, regardless the policies surrounding them because they built by light. There are others who, respectfully speaking, maybe just looted from the treasury. Even though they have it, they can't perpetuate it. They can't reproduce it because it did not come through understanding. Hallelujah. God is giving you predictability. Because you see, when you succeed, usually men will believe you are lucky. <laughs> but when your result becomes sustained, there's no more luck there. You don't become sustainably successful by luck. Gentiles can come to your light. But their kings only come to the brightness of your rising. This is true for any aspect of life. Politics and governance, business, ministry, career, family, whatever it is. Provided you hold the keys, the patterns that are responsible for that outcome. I had the privilege of watching God's servant. I couldn't make it and I was watching the 40th anniversary of the living faith and while i heard him preach at a point quite honestly i was not just listening to the sermon again i was saying i remember or i can imagine when the ministry was say 10 or 15 years probably he said after 40 years we'll still be doing this i'm sure there are people who said you are not sure but now after 40 years when i looked at papa copeland in his 80s speaking with such conviction i said patterns are dangerously powerful they look like they will fail but you will keep working with them for a long time and they will not fail the simplicity of patterns is why they are not trusted patterns are deceptfully simple if it be thou bid me come come he said and such a complicated issue like walking on water suddenly becomes child's play because someone learned to obey the master. Spiritual patterns give you predictability and sustainability. Let me tell you this. 30 years if Christ tarries, 40 years if Christ tarries, you will still be standing and waxing strong and moving forward because you are not moving yourself forward there is an agency a combination of the spirit and understanding moving you forward fear your result if it just happened but if it happened by patterns rest leads me to the third point spiritual patterns give us peace and confidence it's one thing to have results but it's another thing to trust and to be secured in the results that you have. Peace and confidence. Isaiah 33 and verse 6, it says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. 
wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times when you have wisdom when you have knowledge it gives you stability you no longer are afraid of your results why because the some of you here are chefs some of you here are wonderful people when it has to do with cooking and the rest if you ask me now as anointed as i am you bring me ingredients and say quickly you are given 30 minutes or two hours cook something you have to sign that whatever i cook you must eat it so that i don't know i'm i'm sure that i'm not wasting my time are we together i'll have to pray except if the holy ghost just appears and says add this after 10 minutes add this it's not that bad but i think it's not good too i'm not <laughs> are we together yeah why it's not because the food cannot be made there is a lot of guessing You'll be surprised that salt may be the first thing I'll add. <laughs> and then add any other thing. Mix them. I'll just mix whatever the menu says and close it. And say, Lord, I unto you I commit this meal. <laughs> but there are some of you here. Even if we say cook for all of us. Even if it's for 20,000 people. All you need is space and time. You will surprise us like you are cooking for one person. Because you are cooking out of knowledge. You are not afraid of what you are doing. The number does not matter. The formula is the same. Are you seeing that now? Yes. So you are no longer afraid of your results. Listen, God is helping you to take away fear. The moment you are afraid, can I deliver? Can I not deliver? That is a report card. Go back and become a master. Masters don't fear. They, they are saturated by the ordinances that keep them on top. They are secured by it. When you say, God help me, he does not say, ah, you're about to disgrace my name. We're talking of the ancient of days. He now says, Claire, let me see that challenge. God, I've never seen it. He said, it doesn't matter, I'm creator. I can take it out of the way. Mastery. We must fade away fear from our life fear of producing results god blesses your business you make great gain and you are afraid because you are sure it will not last the moment you are sure it's not it will not last you are right it won't last i'm called into ministry what is the guarantee that i'll still be blessing people what is the guarantee that if i stand on the crusade ground the sick will be healed what's the guarantee that if i speak God is directing me and saying, I'm blessing people. I'm imparting someone. Ah, let me not announce it. Oh, what if I now say, Your name is John, and nobody comes out? What if I now say, God is giving speed, and everybody's looking at you? No, it is a call for mastery. You go back and learn the ways of the Spirit. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind? His power at work in you, changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know, in his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there, and then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's the Holy Ghost, he's the Holy Ghost. He's the spirit of the living God. He's the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. He's the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Rearranging everything in obedience to Christ. 
You are building everything. Please sit down. We have to pray. Peace and confidence. Leviticus 26 and verse 6. A scripture I found that blessed me years ago. Please read with me if you are a Christian. Ready? One to read. And I will give you peace in the land. Say amen. amen. Let's keep reading. And ye shall lie down and none shall make you afraid and i will read evil beasts out of the land neither shall the sword go through your land peace why job told us the secret that the lord would deliver you from six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men he said because you have a covenant with the stones do you know what that means that every manipulation of witchcraft depends on the elements of creation to work but i have a covenant with them so when you use them against me they would not work they were authorized to support me and not fight me whether you use water whether you use the stones whether you use the rocks whether you use animals there is a covenant between me and creation that no enchantment and no divination can stand. So I find rest. I can sleep with my eyes closed. Please sit down. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence, the destruction, help them please, that wasted in noonday. There are all kinds of evils sweeping across our world. You get up in the morning, you are stretching outside, you just receive something you have no business receiving. You return back into a life of tragedies. Someone shout no way. and confidence many believers are afraid we pray out of fear we walk out of fear how am i sure that if i lose this job there is a way out how am i sure my destiny will be fine now that i'm 40 or 50 or 60 how am i sure they are not going to diagnose me with maybe kidney or prostrate fine rest I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. Truly I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. God is giving us peace and rest. It used to be elderly people who have high blood pressure. Right now you see teenagers moving around, talking as if they are 50 years. Someone who is 19, speaking foolishly. What is wrong? And he's not even aware. May that spirit be far from your life. Far from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Worry. There are people who sleep, they have to take pills that are as full as my hand. In their, their teens, their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, it's almost killing you. Find peace. Mastery of the patterns of God. Can, you can secure his presence. You can know he's there. Waiting for a feeling is nonsense. You can know he's there. I will be still. And know you are God. We will be still and know you are God. But Apostle, while I'm being still, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man, how shall these things be? How shall my life be lifted? Are you sure God will not disappoint me? should i truly put all my eggs in one basket if it is the divine patterns of god you can die believing him i assure you but before you make boast 
be sure that you are walking by his patterns because if you are not walking by his patterns shame is imminent but if by his patterns then you can be sure that his divine power can give men all things that pertains unto life and godliness listen to me God in this season is going to be challenging many of you to do a lot of things ambitious things daring things he's going to give you instructions you may do what you have never done in your life before find rest trust the patterns even if you do not trust yourself for some of you God will speak to you and say all right by next month start that building and the only thing you have is 10 bags of cement and a land you are still negotiating and God will say you go and get one trailer of sharp sand pour it there let the devil see it that the hand of Zerubbabel let me tell you this God can only become Omega if you allow him become Alpha if you refuse I initiate that dimension Lord you must be Alpha then he's guaranteed to be Omega write this down the Bible is a coded compendium of spiritual patterns the Bible is a coded compend Bible is a coded compendium listen carefully the Bible is a coded compendium of spiritual patterns that lead to various kinds and various levels of extraordinary results I was teaching the school of ministry students I think it was yesterday and we were examining pneumatology and I was telling them that the Bible just because every kingdom has secrets are we in agreement every kingdom has secrets and the secrets are hidden listen carefully they can hide the treasures of the kingdom somewhere there can be coded doors some of the doors are even hidden in dimensions it's not a physical door you invoke you enchant things and then the doors appear they are hidden in dimensions planes of reality the bible this book you see is more than a book with information it is a compendium of coded secrets from the old testament to the new testament the gospels the epistles down till revelation it is coded and full of mysteries that control different levels of results just reading them intellectually may not grant you access to all of those coded information the bible says let me show you a scripture that will bless you very quickly and then we'll pray isaiah 29 please from verse 11 and 12 isaiah 29 verse 11 and 12 very quickly and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of what a book koinonia read with me a book that is sealed just because it is opened does not mean it is opened you can open your bible but it is still sealed which men deliver to one who is educated saying read this i pray and he said i cannot why for it is sealed next verse it says and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i'm not even educated in the first place what kind of a book is that that whether you are educated or not it doesn't mean anything as far as decoding the mysteries are there your life not prophetically directly is written in this book you are seeing believe me this is not just a prophetic statement is a literal statement but until god opens your eyes you will find something that was written in the bible that has not been fulfilled by anybody and you will know you are the one it was written for not just to apply it prophetically directly but until god opens your eyes you will not see the messianic prophecy was written hundreds of years before jesus came many people saw it and they thought they were the ones to fulfill it but when jesus came in luke chapter 4 the bible says he was given the scroll of Isaiah for to read when he opened it he said the spirit of the lord is upon me when he was done saying it he said today this scripture is fulfilled that means i am the one this was written about 
you will be surprised to know how many things were written about you and your family until God connects the dots Psalm 25 and verse 14 here it is the secret of the Lord the secret of the Lord God has secrets believers hear me God has secrets not everything is in plain sight the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him the Hebrew word Yirat Adonai the spirit of reverence is with them that fear him and he will show them listen there is a dimension of spiritual truth that cannot be studied you are initiated like occultism into that body of truth you cannot find it on your own it's the spirit of grace that will draw your hands and take you to that inner chamber of the spirit and you will see mysteries it says open down my eyes that i may behold behold wondrous things from out of thy law until then i'll just be reading the law but when my eyes are open then i will now see hallelujah matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching and he said because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom please look up these patterns as coded as they are they were encapsulated into a body of knowledge the bible calls mysteries please shout it after me say mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom what are they the hidden code of operation these are the body of truth that help believers to excel in light the body of truth allocated for my victory and your victory they are called mysteries happy is a man that finds them happy is the man who God causes to approach him when you approach him he grants you access to these mysteries when you find it they are life to those who find them your life becomes episodes of wonder just when you think you have exhausted a dimension you will see another one unfolding Ephesians chapter 3 let's do a long reading and then we'll pray there was a man in scripture called Paul he later would become the apostle of the lamb this was a man who was learned he was a Pharisee and then when he began to communicate certain depths of the spirit Paul noticed that every time as he sojourned mentoring and building the church even the very apostles of the lamb were concerned are you sure about these things you are teaching and Paul said listen before I start my lecture I need for you to know the basis give it to us verse 1 for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles reading to verse 10 if ye have learned of the dispensation of the grace of God which was which is given me to you word that means for your sake a measure of grace was given how that by revelation you see it there he made known unto me the mystery a body of truth was given to me as an apostle for the sake of a generation he's explaining now that as complicated as my thoughts are you need to understand that these are not fabrications of a Pharisee's intelligence I was drawn like being initiated into a room and I was given a body of truth for a generation as I wrote afore in few words, verse 4, it says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages, here it is, was not made known unto the sons of men. Wow. These dimensions were not revealed to anyone. It says, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit verse 6 that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in christ by the gospel 
7 whereof i was made a minister according to the gift are you seeing it there the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working of his power eight unto me who i am less than the least of the saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ two more verses and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by christ what do we do with these mysteries verse 10 to the intent this is why these mysteries are given there are arrogant principalities and powers that will not respect god nor the saints so this mystery was given as a way of punishing the powers of darkness and forcing them to acknowledge the superiority of christ to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom when those minis, those mysteries manifest we call them the wisdom of god but listen to me they are a body of truth i'm praying that you will believe what i'm telling you and you will be surprised to see the way your life will change mysteries when you hold them like a bunch of keys you can find rest knowing that your life must become exceptional all you need to do is begin to travel when you stand before a door you check and remember the holy ghost is with you there what mystery opens that door and he says open this twice the mystery that opens this door is there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty you get to a door and the mystery that opens it is that you sow both bread and seed. Seed is for eating, bread is for sowing. But there are certain doors that both bread and seed together is what opens them. That you can cast your bread before the waters. And in this case, you will find it after many days. Then you open that door. You can get to another door. It says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. By doing that, I will be saved from my enemy. So when it is clear that defeat is imminent, you will back up like the days of Jehoshaphat. Write your prayer request on the ground and dance like a madman while people are sleeping over something you know has been concluded. And while that is happening, ah, the God of heaven. All our is turning things around. Yeah. All our is turning things around. All our is turning things around. At midnight, while the rest were sleeping, Paul and Silas said, You wasted your time by closing this door. You would have chained me in the days of my ignorance. But we are not just here as empty apostles. We know what to do. When they prayed, they saw angels. They said, get out of my way. I need God himself to come here. The Bible says they sang. They sang aloud. Because their singing aloud was putting pressure on his integrity. Suddenly, the one who sits on the throne, they sang it so beautifully. And even unto the Lamb, he arose and said, nonsense. Let me see the gate that is covering you. And he scattered it into pieces. Let me show you peace and rest that comes through master mastery. The jailer took knife to kill himself. He said, don't rush. This is a result we can reproduce again. There's no point killing yourself. When Jesus resurrected, he did not rush out of the grave. No. No, there's no need rushing. I rose up by myself. What am I running for? And he came out with honor and dignity. I can do it again if need be. I am the resurrection and the life. Are you ready to pray? I thought we'll have time so that I will share with you in my entire life. I hope that we'll take it in some other series. We didn't finish covering what I intended. We'll cover tonight. But there are nine of these mysteries. 
that the Lord gave to me nine for an unbeatable spiritual life some of them whilst I learned them as I listened to our fathers of faith I had them saying the same thing expressing it in different ways nine when you find these keys you will stand and play life like you are playing a chess go this way go that way believe me I apologize if it sounds like pride behind results at work are these mysteries they are the defense systems of masters you stand and they become a garrison to you irrefutable backed up by the jealousy of God himself you can take it to any nation and take it anywhere people will think you are making noise till the result humbles them hear me we make our boast in the Lord and on the strength of the mysteries we have held and these mysteries they are not for individuals they are for the body to be dispensed so that on the strength of these mysteries you can turn back and go rejoicing knowing that life can be at your command we command results intentionally I hope please do not miss any one of these i hope that god will grant grace and will touch all nine of them the mysteries that control fearful results in this life every student prepares for exams but it's the result that the marker when the lecturer marks they place it on the board you will come and see what you wrote there is that true how many of you remember people who will make a lot of noise after exam? The answer is five. The answer is ten. Whereas someone will just keep quiet as if he doesn't know anything. That's the person you will see getting 95, 97. And someone is making noise, nonsense from morning till night. And you find out that you will get seven or twelve. God is bringing us to that place of mastery. Noiseless victory. It is the results that will make the noise. Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one. Lord, I am tired of shadow boxing around my destiny. I want you to bring me to a place of quintessence. A place of mastery. Spiritually. Financially. And otherwise. Please lift your voice and pray. We came to pray. A few minutes of prayer. Are you praying? He that strives for mastery is not proud except he strives lawfully. The mysteries of the kingdom, controlling results, spiritual patterns, leading men to predictable outcomes. Hallelujah. Look up. Please, we are going to pray. As we prepare to begin to feast on these mysteries in the coming weeks, you are going to pray and say lord open my eyes understanding is a real miracle i'm telling you then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture are you ready to pray lord open my eyes to see may i see what my father did not see may i see what those who have gone ahead of me did not see in the name of jesus please pray please pray in the name of jesus the christ of god
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Scripture says, He that told you have asked for nothing. The seed for receiving is asking. He said, Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Listen, you're going to pray one serious prayer. Father, the door that stands before me now, what is the mystery that opens it? Reveal it to me. Please lift your voice and pray. Every door standing before us, there is a mystery and there is a pattern in ministry. The door of the next level for your spiritual life. Show me. Show me by your mercy the door to signs and wonders the door to increase and multiplication the door to influence and visibility the door to grace and power from on high Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the ministry of William Branham, of blessed memory, the Lord gave him a code and said, There is an angel that I will send to walk with you. And that every time his prophetic gift was to be opened and unlocked he would have to wait until that angel came and it was recorded that many times they would wait for as, as long as an hour they would sing psalms hymns spiritual songs they would be angry he would stand there and say i can do nothing i was instructed that it is the coming of this angel that opens up my prophetic fountain and later in the middle of nowhere he would just say wow the angel has come and within minutes the time lag will be well paid for, justifiably paid for, by the level of divine unction. For Samson, it was his hair, not even his hands. Protect your hair as a Nazarene. It's not just something that rolls around your hair. There is a mystery attached to it. For the young lad and that crusade ground, the mystery was hidden in five loaves and two fish. Whoever was careless with that five loaf and two fish will not only be stopping a young man from eating, he will be stopping 5,000 people from having healthy meals. For many of you, God will give you certain secrets that for the next six months, your secret is your prayer life. Not just random as believers. Pray from 12 to 1. There is something I want to do. It's a personalized dealing. You miss out on that unique instruction, you'll be surprised how powerless you will be. Are we together? For Archbishop Benson, either whole side was said that a time came, God gave him an instruction that 80% of his earnings would have to go was a sacrifice. But living off 20% made him so wealthy, he was so blessed, he was so visible, he went around the world 53 times. It is the divine strategy that is given to us that provides for victory. When you stand before Jericho, don't guess how to bring it down. Jericho is a fearful city. Five chariots can stand on the fence. You need a strategy. Because even if Jericho falls down, you still cannot pass. It will still become another fence. You need a formula. Sometimes it may not make sense. You will go around six times. Foolishly so. And then you go around seven times on the seventh day and you will be asked to shout for some of you. And it is in that shout that Jericho falls down. There are some of you, God would tell you to go for a three days dry fasting. Dry means dry. 
and it's in that fasting he will reveal to you the ordinances of the next level of your life for some of you god will give you very dangerous instructions some of you god will say for the next one week gather all your family members who are praying every day whoever is sleeping should sleep in the parlor they carry the person and bring the person out and you are praying that is the instruction for some of you your strategy is hold your peace and allow me fight step out of the way your worry is interrupting my battle just step back and allow me be the one who stands for you lord what is the strategy on our way from egypt leaving this place i will come to you as a pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night if you don't see fire by night don't move if you don't see cloud by day don't move i am not there don't guess saul you are a king but you are not a prophet don't offer sacrifices and the people pressured saul they said look samuel is wasting our time we can't be here are you not a king and out of pressure he offered the sacrifices to god or not to an idol as soon as he was done samuel came and said saul you have done foolishly what did you do you would have allowed me come and god would have established your throne forever but now for violating patterns the throne is taken away from you god can ask you to carry a seed and give a man of god because you don't want it to leave your house you carried it and gave your child you did not obey that's that's disobedience listen i'm saying this because as you leave this place god will not leave you without a witness you will hear him and he will speak to you he will give you instructions he will tell you things some of them may be ego stinging but they contain in them the mysteries of the kingdom if you have the childlike approach to listen you will be surprised what will happen to you Are we blessed for some of you god is going to give you instructions dust your cv and keep it have soft copies and keep it but i'm not applying for anything just do what i'm asking you to do a gentleman got a job by sending a text by mistake to a general he felt like dying because he knew that he had abused the privilege and the general called back he was afraid he said who is this I'm so, so, so I'm, I'm sorry sir I was to send it to somebody he said no no problem come and meet me in my office that became his job that was not a mistake it was the Holy Ghost directing him to his place of destiny don't choose who will help you allow God choose them you choose who will help you you, you will be punished by the vacillations of men's emotion I will help you today tomorrow they'll say I can't remember telling you that look unto god they looked unto him and their faces were lightened the bible says we have to close let me pray for you father in the name of jesus christ we say amen to everything you are doing amen amen Our lifting and to our rising. Amen. Amen. As a family of faith, we are receiving that prophetic word. Let it be so for us, oh God. Amen. To visibility, to influence, to favor, to speed to high-level spirituality to fresh unction you are receiving you are not just singing one more time amen to fear 
powerful testimonies come this week to multiply opportunities to open doors to the salvation of our loved ones we say amen to exemption from kidnappers to exemption from the the scorching tongues of men for the last time as a family of faith I want to make an altar call very quickly. Please, let's keep standing. Just help those under the anointing. Our time is gone. We've said amen to your salvation already. We've agreed with God that tonight is your night of salvation. You are in this place under the sound of my voice. All the overflows right down to the basement outside, following from whatever nation across the continents of the earth. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need to make it right with Jesus. For some of you, you are saying, I need restoration in my spiritual life. Doesn't matter what category, you're here and then outside, please rush, come stand before me here. It will be my joy and pleasure to lead you to Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they come. Win that war. Do not be afraid. You're coming before Jesus. All overflows. Move to your projector stand. Move to your screens. Move to your screens. Those following from your homes, your offices, wherever. I just want you to stand in agreement. God bless you. Come. Come. We're going to sing that song one more time. Amen to your salvation. Amen to a new season in your life. Koinonia, is this how you celebrate salvation? Sing Brothers and sisters, thank you. I salute you for the courage to make this decision. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You say, ye must be born again. This is a family of faith. Doesn't matter how things have been, God is ready to give you a new beginning. Now for those of you in front, all of you following me online and then those at the overflows i'd like you to lift your right hand please let them come please let them come very quickly lift your right hand say after me very clearly audibly hear yourself saying it you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you came you died for me you were raised for my justification right now according to the authority of scripture i receive eternal life into my spirit by declaring that you are my lord you are my savior you are my king i declare that the power of sin of satan of the grave of hell is broken over my life from today i am a child of god i move forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted father thank you we present to you jesus the ones you died for it's an honor to lift them to you as trophies thanking you for your work on the cross i pray that the grace that keeps may that grace keep you the grace that lifts may that grace lift you in the name of jesus the son of the living god you go from glory to glory from grace to grace i commend you to the ministry of the word i commend you to the ministry of the spirit i declare you will never be the same from today and forever in the name of jesus christ you are blessed and you remain blessed forever now very quickly there's a gentleman smiling at you with a placard all of you please move to my right which is your left and they'll take you and just just have a few information and pray with you and you'll be back to your seat god bless you let's celebrate them koinonia
hallelujah please do not miss i want you don't come here next week alone this is not just about increase god has been faithful to us but the things that you're going to be learning in this week that comes they are the mysteries of the kingdom these are very potent spiritual secrets and i want you to come with your heart expectant come ready to receive the lord will never disappoint you in jesus name i declare and i speak over your week beginning be blessed in the name of jesus a thousand shall fall by your side oh by the way i re i rebuke the spirit of death you will never be a victim of kidnappers and all these people that keep killing and kidnapping people may the earth open and swallow them in the name of jesus christ be protected supernaturally the wisdom of the spirit is at work in your life you're carrying superior unctions on your head in the name of jesus go and return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ when we share the grace please do well to greet someone by your left and right and then you sing amen for me praise the lord the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen by the way please can we honor very specially again this great great vessels of god how many of you love them thank you so so much minister nosa thank you thank you thank you so much we love you sincerely minister myro thank you and then our one and only dunsin thank you thank you the lord bless you and increase you the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen god bless you and see you on sunday Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.